Absolutely not. Mm. There's never a time where I can look at that hip hop artist, anybody that's been exposed for abusing and, and just forget it mm. or overlook the fact that I know that you're an abuser, you mm. know, for me. Hello, 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 and welcome to yet another episode of the Conversation Capital. Thank you so much for loving us and showing us all the love on different social media platforms. If you're catching us on TikTok, don't forget to move on over to YouTube. That's where our full podcasts are. If you are watching us on YouTube, make sure to like, share, and subscribe. Leave a comment, huh? Leave a comment, guys. Must it comment? Definitely. Our voice of reason, as always, is Mamaga Asante. Darling. <laughs> it sounds so good on you. I like my new title. <laughs> <laughs> I love it for you, too. So we've got Bonga Buata, the voice of reason. Today, it is uh, the Get Ready With Me episode, and we're going to be going through some of your comments and uh, questions. And we're also going to be looking at whether an abuser can be rehabilitated. Can you say, I am reformed? I was once an abuser. But now I don't. We can forget about it. Or as a woman, can you say I, I used to beat up my mans, mm. but I no longer do? Mm. You know, the, this is the question that we're asking, but we're going to be getting into that after the questions and comments. Okay. So Zemi Z um, gave us um, a quite a lengthy comment, but we could not go without reading it because it's so layered, right? Zemi says, beautiful chat TCC fam. One thing about being a new parent, it's epiphany upon epiphany. Congratulations to you, bon- Bonga and Given. Thank you so much. The most notable thing for me in this chat was the agency that you are both able to exercise over the parenting process. Having children when you are ready for them is so underrated. I do not have a lot of that because I was a third year student when I fell pregnant and my parents literally shipped me back to school a month after I gave birth. I had no room to even feel, let alone process, the changes and emotions that come with it all. I had oversupply of milk but living at rest. Hated getting picked off the milestones and coming um, home for the holiday break to a child that didn't recognize me. I didn't even have room to express that because I must be grateful that they were helping me out of the mess I created. I never finished that degree. My boy is 14 now and we are flourishing but it took me years years of inner work mm. anyway love your work so that is a really layered conversation um starting on the point yeah autonomy um having the autonomy um over being a parent sorry i'm, just I'm distracted so thrown off. <laughs> yes me too. are you guys done over there so can we please continue with that i'm episode? also very distracted you know the studio audience is busy making a noise <laughs> okay let's start off with the autonomy yeah okay so with autonomy, it's we said the other day, uh, just a few hours ago, we yes. chatting together. Yeah. Okay, life doesn't always work out as you want it to work yes. out, right? Mm. Um, I got, I got pregnant. I didn't even ma- firstly, I never thought I would have a baby. Mm. Mm. Don't ask me why I was having unprotected sex. <laughs> I never thought I'd have a baby, but yeah, yeah, just didn't occur to me, mm. right? And then on top of that. In my life plans, if I were to have a baby, I would have never imagined I'd still be living at home. Yes. However, I do have to speak about the fact that I have a level of independence and in that I work, I have my mm. own money and so forth. Mm-hmm. So I definitely agree with her in terms of having autonomy over the process mm. because there are decisions about my baby that my parents don't have any co- in fact most decisions mm. they don't have control over them mm. um in contrast to zami because i may live in your house but i can provide for myself and my baby so mm-hmm. it's almost like they take my word for it mm. i can listen to what i want to listen to as advice as yes. loving advice, but not as to i can opt out about lying i think that's the word like they're not instructing you exactly or, yeah yeah and i feel like that is such an important thing because i for example i think i we spoke about i may have may have, may have mentioned it in one of the episodes of our conversations but earrings my mother wants her to to, to mm. already get her mm. earrings mm. or piercings yeah. done and i'm like no she'll do that when she wants to like if she comes back from school and she says mommy other kids have earrings why don't i have earrings mm-hmm. then i'll consider that because i want to give her the option to choose right mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. however if my mother was to say that to me and i'm under her maybe financial support or whatever 
I wouldn't have that option. And this mm. is a small example. There are big ones we can make around yes. raising your child yes. that you do not have. What type of formula they should yes. drink, what they should wear, what they, you know, because which school they should go to. You're not providing that. Yes, and that, that, that's the time that's taken away like she wasn't vastly. And also just being made to feel like the baby's not celebrated and neither are you. Mm. You know, that's basically what she's, cause she's saying. I had to be grateful for this mistake I had made because they were fixing my mess up. Yes. You know, and just that experience of this thing that's supposed to be like life, that is rather not supposed to be, that is life altering and not having the opportunity to properly celebrate yeah. it, you know. And like you're saying, that autonomy to be like, oh, actually, I, I still want to breastfeed. Yes. Oh, actually, I don't want to be shipped off to school. Um, I actually want to stay with the baby for a year and start uh, go back to the degree once my baby is one year old. Yeah. You know, or whatever the choice is, you know. And for me, it was the part where where she says, I had to be grateful for mm. it. Because there are things, ne? I don't know if you've experienced, where like, somebody's assisting you and you have to be grateful, but you don't necessarily want it the way they're doing it. No. You know? Yes. But you, I have that a lot. Like, my mother babysits my baby, right? And in that moment, she has full autonomy. I can't yes. say anything because yes. I know that can be taken away. Like, uh, okay. I mean, she won't do yes. it rudely. Yes, but it will be like, oh, clearly. She won't do it rudely yes. or anything. Mm. But in that moment, my autonomy is all gone because I need at this exactly. moment, I need her yes. to take over. <laughs> yes, and to take the baby and to help you. Exactly. You know, and this is something that I've learned recently. I found it so interesting because I've never thought of it. Anybody who knows me, I always said, if I get the option to be a housewife, I'm taking it with both hands. But for the first time in my life in 2023, that has absolutely changed. I've actually learned and I will never not be financially independent. Yes. And somebody, so, I don't know, a person that I know, just going through an altercation and, and then her therapist said to her, because uh, her argument was that my partner was never a bad person but now has evolved into this person that's a bad person and, and she's always been stay at home. And, and the, what's what the therapist said that it really just sat with me and it landed in a way that it's never landed. The therapist says that somebody might not be a bad person, but anybody who's given that much power over somebody else's life, because you're like a child to that person, you need to ask for tampon money, mm. you need to ask for pad money, underwear money. Anybody who's given that much power over your life, when it's time for them to make decisions, they don't expect you to weigh in. Yes. You can never weigh in. How can you weigh in? With, you know, yeah, with what, your opinion. What do you mean you only drink bottled water? Mm. Does my budget reach <laughs> bottled water? Do you, do you get what I'm saying? I do. You know, what do you, what do you mean the bedroom lights need to be on when you fall asleep or when the child falls asleep? Mm. Okay, does my money afford bed like lights to be on? Mm. And you don't have money. What do you mean you only wear Levi jeans? Mm. You know, these That's become so the questions. Where is this money that you have that pays for Levi jeans? And you know, um, a bit away from this conversation, mm. but linked somehow is uh, the reason a lot of people, some people um, stay in abusive relationships is mm. exactly this. Mm. What other alternative do I have? What alternative do I what have? What other alternative do I have outside of this person that provides for me? So I'd rather stay there. Um, another thing that she spoke about was that having an oversupply and not being able to um, be with the baby. Like when you're breastfeeding, for a lot of women, breastfeeding, no, actually, for a lot of women, breastfeeding is something they want to do, right? Mm -hmm. But here you are with an oversupply that would be great for your baby, but you're not able to do that. So the emotional turmoil of having to go through that and be a student as well. Mm -hmm. I was actually thinking during all throughout my pregnancy, I was like, I'm not condoning teenage pregnancy, Ne? But I, I've got a level of um, a different respect for people who became um, teenage mothers mm -hmm. and coped through that. Because I had everything I needed, but pregnancy was so hard for me. Mm -hmm. And I'm not even talking about the material stuff, but just emotionally. So I can't imagine being a baby mm -hmm. and then having to go through all of that. And you also have parents that are angry mm -hmm. at you, you know, and, and that are not... Everyone is like... Nobody's celebrating yes, it. It's not a beautiful experience. Everything, You're ashamed the whole time. Exactly. Oh. It's, I had a newfound respect. I'm not condoning mm. teenage pregnancy. However, it just got me thinking, oh, wow, mm. these mm. people are strong. Mm. Yeah, so... And, and the point where she says she had to do a lot of inner work, I'm sure there was a lot of... Because she wanted to be there, there was a lot of guilt for the time that she missed with her baby. Mm. Especially because we... What's this... We, we value so much these critical, um, the, the first few years, and we're told they're so critical mm, mm. that when you miss out, I'm going back to work very soon. I'm, a, I'm already feeling guilty. So I can imagine mm. for someone else who didn't have the time that I had with my baby, 
Yeah, this week you were talking about how you struggled to take your baby to the nanny. Yes, and I'm not even back at work. Yeah. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so- I also thought about how... Um, what's the other thing I was thinking about? My head is all over the place. Okay, but yeah, mm-hmm. we can end it there with Zami. Mm-hmm. Um, I want to go to the Amo. Yes. Are you okay, why is your head all over the place? Are you thinking about your baby? She's fine. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Plus, we have the baby around. It's me. Yes, yeah, me it's baby. Actually, yeah, it's, it's a lot. <laughs> um, so, Amokha Lang says, currently pre- pregnant and absolutely enjoyed this. I'm 30, living at home, and advices I'm getting every day are too much. Mm. From being forced to eat a full plate of food to don't wear clothes that show, don't post about your pregnancy, plus dealing with a partner who isn't ready for baby when I am. So I'm understanding of him and his choice, but people around me aren't having it. Forcing me to take him to court, etc. Before we go to Amu, mm-hmm. I remembered what I wanted to say mm-hmm. in relation to Zemi's comment. Mm-hmm. I was watching something and the girl is, um, uh, uh, um, I think about, fif- not 15, maybe 16, 17, and she's pregnant. Mm-hmm. And she's confident sh- that she wants to have this baby. And she's happy she's having this baby. Mm-hmm. But she was being shamed for this, you know? Mm-hmm. Jorge, you can't be this excited. Like mm-hmm. her mother was giving her the option of um, going the route of termination, which mm-hmm. is okay, of course, if it's your choice, right? Mm-hmm. We are pro-choice. However, this girl was adamant that I want to have this baby and I'm happy to have this baby, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. So for me, that was an interesting thing to notice. Here's a child. Yes, I'm a teenage, um, I'm, 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 preg- I'm a teenager and I'm pregnant. However, I consciously want to have this baby. I'm not doubting the fact that I want to have this baby. And that's so interesting. Right? And I'm happy about it in this moment. I wonder why. And she was defending it strongly. Like, mm. no, we cannot consider abortion. We cannot consider termination of any kind and i found it to be because she was happy she's having this baby and mm. that was an interesting contrast because no one could convince her otherwise despite uh, despite the fact that she's not independent like it was as if there's nothing that could convince her so that was an interesting thing for me mm. she was almost not allowed to be proud of mm. having the baby but she's like I am but though. she's like i'm fine mm, and i want to have my baby yes and i'm 17 yes and i've decided to start early yeah <laughs> Yeah, it is a difficult conversation because, like, I, you know, it's easy to look at it and be like, oh, cute. But I'm thinking of my niece. If my niece did that, I might spank her. <laughs> like, I might just, I might just kill her. <laughs> like, like what? What type of thing? Yeah. <laughs> you know, that would be my reaction as well. It's as if they sh- there must be a level of shame, baby. Hey. And then, yeah, yeah we'll embrace. Hey, we'll embrace later when I we'll start saying the mother For now, <laughs> you better be embarrassed. <laughs> You see, and um, she was doing the total opposite, mm. which was an interesting thing mm. for me to see, and quite bold, in mm. fact. Where was this that you were seeing that? On a TV program. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, it's a reality show. You know, oh. an interesting fact, uh, Ursula. Uh-huh. As old as I am, when I have my baby, I can relate so much to these teenage girls that were following their lives. I think you always see myself referring to me as a teenage pregnant. Yes, yeah, yeah, you do. You do. I can relate so much, and I don't understand. I'm so old. Why am I relating to teenagers? But I, think, my experience is so. I think it goes back to the fact that it, it just because you're older, it does not make it a non-new experience. Yes. Like it will always be, and a new experience is a new experience. It will always no matter be what you have. Yeah, it will always be multilayered. Like uh, in the song "Matrimony" with Wale, that guy says, uh, "Marriage, marriage is like getting getting married is like a roller coaster." Yes. And then he yes. says, and then but towards the end, uh, as the song is starting, he says, "It's a new thing. You can never be ready for it." Yeah. Like even no matter how prepared you are, yes, mm. there's counseling in it, but at the end of the day, it's a new experience. I watch these girls, and I'm like. The same tears that they have, mm. I, ha- I had during my pregnancy. Mm. And that blows my mind all the time. Because you sure. think you're a particular age, you're much more ready and so forth. And you more know? equipped. Yeah, yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. So back to Amokhelang's comment, right? Um, first, she speaks about being forced to eat a full plate of food. Don't wear these clothes that show and don't post about your pregnancy. Um, you know what? As a person that's an oversharer, I can relate a lot to um, it being difficult to keep it to myself. Mm. But I appreciate that, like I kept it to myself or a few people yes. in my life. Yes. But what I find very interesting about what she says is that dealing with a partner who isn't ready for a baby when I am, 
So I'm understanding of him and his choice, but people around me aren't having it. I'm looking, I'm reading this and I'm like, how are you okay? What's that? Yeah. We are built different. No, I also found that Phew. extremely mature of her. What's her name? Amkhelang. Amkhelang, wow. Kudos to you. Phew. Yeah, because she's basically saying, I'm dealing with all these issues, people wanting me to eat. Well, then she says, you know, and I'm also dealing with a partner that actually doesn't want the baby. I want them and I'm okay with that. I'm and okay with his I'm choice. I'm okay with his choice. And people are already saying, no, you must be ready to take him to court. And I'm like, no, actually. I'm fine. You know, and but it goes back to, it's such an important decision to be able to make. Mm. Right? That And especially like if you have the child, let's say, even if you're married. But if you have a child with somebody who from the beginning said, I don't want a baby. Mm. I remember, I think I've discussed it in another episode. I don't remember which one where there was a lady who says um, she got divorced and people want to call her ex-husband a deadbeat dad. And she's like, but in truth, from the beginning, before we got married, he said, I don't want children. Hmm. And then I forgot the pill intentionally because I wanted to fall pregnant. She fell pregnant and he was devastated. Hmm. And then she went on to forget the pill again and have the second one. And when they eventually got a divorce and he wasn't supporting the baby, she's like, I cannot bring myself to lie about the fact that I trapped him into being a dad. Mm. He never wanted to be a dad. And I took away his autonomy over it. I mean, get a vasectomy also. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I, 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 I thought that was so honest of her. It was yes, a Facebook post. Yeah. It was so truthful. It was so honest because women control narratives in that aspect right True. a woman can quickly say oh he's not taking care of his child mm. you know but when you sit if you really sit with it and you're honest with people and everyone and you can say this man never wanted a child mm. and i trapped him mm. yo yeah i'm not saying i'm trapped i'm just saying to be honest enough to be like it's okay yeah it's okay it's okay you know, we're here now we're here now i want the baby and mm. you don't have to look after it if you don't want sure. to Yo. yeah i i don't know i always say okay i don't know how i would have gone through that obviously i have mm. my family but not without the person i made the baby with mm. so but it also speaks about the autonomy fa- factor right mm. that we spoke about earlier mm. it speaks to that as well mm. um so mm. we are heading to the comment on tiktok mm. who's that says are you saying that woman it was on it was on Nicola's um, episode who uh. was narrating her rape st- uh, rape story with yes. us, right? Yes. And then Stacy29 on TikTok says, are you saying that women do not have the responsibility to take precautions? Women can r- walk around without being cautious. Where is the accountability? Yeah. I mean, Stacy, I understand how you think like that. In fact, maybe, did you get uh, the comments afterwards? Yes. So, uh, Chico Mama says, using lo- your logic, how do we hold babies who are raped accountable? Exactly. Yeah. Chico Mama also goes to say, this is exactly victim blaming. Mm-hmm. The only mm-hmm. reason a rape occurs is when the rapist decides to rape. Mm-hmm. They are the only ones accountable. And I can get how it's a difficult concept to wrap your head around because... As soon as your phone gets stolen, people say, ah, but Luna, you left it on the table. We've gotten so used to crime that the the onus of crime has been put on us, the, the victims. victims of crime, mm. right? And so I'm using crime, an extended example, because let's say I, I do leave my car open and unlocked. That it's not a green light to go. It doesn't mean, I mean, imagine if a, a criminal got caught with my car after seeing it and then says, no, but she had left it open. Would the cops let them go and be like, Hi, ah, Luena. Luena, you left your car open, so it's your fault. It's not. Meaning that the onus always needs to be on the criminal for doing the wrong thing. In the same way, the onus always needs to be on the rapist for doing the wrong thing, for mm-hmm. raping. It's, it's laughable how it's actually really basic, but it's a difficult concept to wrap our heads around because we're so conditioned to take responsibility for you. Take responsibility for your body. Take responsibility. And I get it, right? We're trying to survive. Mm. We're on survival mode. Mm. You know, at this place, we're like, we're trying to survive. But at the end of the day, being raped is something that shouldn't be happening. And if we start talking about what you were wearing, we remove the conversation away from rapists in society. You know, because a rapist hears the conversation and also feels entitled. Mm. Like, and available or and a mini skirt. We remove the weight of the conversation, yeah. And part of the reason why, um, like you say, we we have almost normalized the the, the, the victim being the one to be cautious mm. is part of women's bodies being seen as things. Ooh. And instead of 
like that's why the example is so clear yes. of stealing a car because that's yeah. how much it's objectified the way yes. it's yes. to women make something an object yeah. yes and and women sure. our autonomy our agency mm. is always taken away so it's like i can do with you what i want mm. that is why um we we say sure. you must dress properly mm. you must do this you must do that it's part of really patriarchy and how it has sure. been designed yeah i i hope that was a clear explanation because i felt like like you said even in the comments mm. it's clear it's clear it's just like like because it, how it, it even sucks we have to go to the point of saying a baby why is a baby mm. being raped yes. to drive the point to drive the point you know you know ugh, I, I actually yeah i, I don't know because I, I i want to get through to stacy more mm. than to bash bash it's not a bashing thing i'm saying can you see learn learn how it's incredibly wrong to put the responsibility of somebody being raped in their hands and be like oh should have dressed better Mm. what because why i mean uh, this is not to say rape doesn't happen on the beach but why do we walk in bikinis freely yes yeah exactly why because it's, uh, it, we can do that have, somewhere else you have no right to somebody else's body yes, that's it period that's point it. blank period people should be able to walk naked without being in danger absolutely yeah yeah okay so that was the last comment in terms of um what we had on tiktok in relation to nicola's episode mm-hmm. uh maybe we should get into the rehabilitation Oh yes, I forgot about that. Yeah, yeah, I forgot about that segment. So, <laughs> what happened? Um, what prompted me to think about this was the death of a hip hop artist, right? Who mm. had been, um, what's this? Accused of being mm. abusive to their partner before. Mm. Um, we saw pictures on social media and all of that. Mm. But now the person has passed on, mm. and after passing on, now we want to speak of them only in good light, mm. right? Mm. And then what added on to this was a particular um, former Guaido star that spoke at the, the memorial, I think. Mm-hmm. Who's Okay, well, I'm not going to say who's known because there's other things to the individual. Mm-hmm. But who has... The, 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 they have once assaulted a woman. They were dating to the point of them being like almost deaf in one ear mm. right so this person is now a pastor i think or he preaches a lot even in that um, if, um what is this memorial he was preaching and then it's as if when we speak about this man we've forgotten about um we've forgotten about what he's done before mm. so i'm like when we speak about him we speak of him as the pastor as this good person can you be a former abuser or must this go with you forever mm. you know mm. because your abuse never goes away of this individual so how can we say at the end like we've forgotten about this thing that you've done or it's 10 years now guys get over it like for me Bonga, honestly absolutely not Mm. there's never a time where i can look at that hip-hop artist anybody that's been exposed for abusing and and just forget it Mm. or overlook the fact that i know that you're an abuser you Mm. know for me you know but i know that people stay with i I just feel like there's a progression trevor noah talks about it i always refer to trevor noah i absolutely (laughs) adore trevor noah (laughs) trevor noah talks about it in his book about the progression of abuse Mm. and how even his mom's abuse started with mbamanyana and how it grows and keeps expanding, you know. And so I just believe, this is me, my stance, and I don't think it's ever going to change. If a man raises his hand towards you, you need to leave. Mm. And if he's going to be reformed and whatever, great for him. Because but I don't think it's possible. When I look, I, I, I agree with you a lot. Um, but it's something I had to probe. And hopefully people will have different comments in the... Because we have the same outlook. Mm. So hopefully in the comments people have a different insight mm. or outlook. But when I look at this person, I can never separate them mm. from that thing they've done. Mm. I even worry for the current wife. Mm. Like, are you okay? Yes. Is everything okay at yes. all? You know? Yes. So I wonder, like, in our society, do we somehow perpetuate or must we say this person has grown this person True. has revolved, True. Or evolved i hear what you're saying you know I mean, and i'm not mm. i'm not i'm just being 
the other side because if you know mm. my politics you know I yes not no i hear you i also know that this is my stance with regards to abuse but i hear the part where when do we allow people you know the opportunity to be reformed and to take a new place like it's almost like you know these people that come out of prison yeah. and they struggle to reintegrate into society because everybody you know and then they never lose that track record or even we can take it all the way to somebody that's raped somebody else mm. you know what if you were 16 you took advantage of a woman and now you're realizing it's a bad thing to do and you're reformed and you've gotten help mm. and you no longer do it but this is your reputation yeah. you know when do we allow for somebody to live a new life in this life yeah that i'm a new person that's not who i am anymore i get that in theory it's beautiful but personally there are just some things that are unforgivable i think and you know what you and i are in the minority mm. because there's a lot more people that have easily forgetting what some of these people and in the done. minority maybe because we haven't experienced it firsthand mm. you know what i mean because it's easy now to talk 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 mm. maybe one day it looks like a blue eye i actually and i'll still be with my man i actually <laughs> said that to to someone in relation to apartheid mm. right we were the fismas fourth generation and we are like you know i want i was looking at a movie and i was like i wonder where would i've been would i've been the one on the streets or would I have been the one in the house? Absolutely. Because it's easy for me. I have yes. rights now. I, it's easy for me to go to the street and say, yes. but I didn't have rights. I, I wouldn't have rights. I absolutely hear so what you So I wonder yeah. these politics that I speak of so boldly. Mm, mm. Because it, I remember once looking at my, my mom. My mom was talking about a struggle hero cousin of hers. Mm. And I thought, <laughs> you know and then like but the older i grow this was when i was younger the older i grow i'm like speaking so would, would i have been one of those i mean i was also at fees must fall but as soon as those rubber bullets came out i was i was home yeah. i was long and, you gone know, besides, by the time the rubber bullets came out at fees must fall you besides know? the rubber bullets mm. when it's like, it's like there are people behind you so many more people behind mm. you there's, yes. there's organizations behind oh, you yes. rooting for you oh. um there's so much mm. rooting for you to keep mm. um in the ground which type there of wasn't thing. for those exactly. during that time so i paused and said mm. so yeah it's a bit of a digression mm. but i was just thinking about that so on the abuse matter it's easy to say um, what if when you marry, not when, literally, mm-hmm. <laughs> but we make an example of a person you find out mm-hmm. this person was an abuser and you know and have experienced them differently. Exactly. What are you going to do in that instance? Mm-hmm. What are we going and to do? And when do you allow that person to be, we've all done things, but like you said, for me, some things are just unforgivable. Hey, but that's also a difficult statement to yes. say things are unforgivable because life is, is nuanced. Yes. Oh, this is a difficult conversation. Yeah, so let us know. Please, yeah. I'm really looking um, forward to hearing or, yeah. or reading people's comments in yeah. the comment box because you and I kind of have the similar yes. outlook. So yeah. there's, yeah. there's not, yeah. And also to somebody who is bold enough to say, I actually was an abuser and I can say that I no longer do it. Yeah, and it was totally a, a type changed. of thinking that I had when I was younger. In fact, I'd probably invite you to come on to TCC, please. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, along those lines, let us know what you think. Is it possible? Have you been ever abused by your partner? You're still with them and it's never happened again. Mm, interesting. And you're interesting. saying, actually, I think it is possible for somebody to lose their temper once only mm. and never again like that. I don't know. Babona, because it's like, yo, I, you just put, added a very <laughs> difficult thing for me because I'm like, okay, you've beaten me once, maybe. And then because there's that forgivable ground thing, mm. And then because you're my partner, I love you, all of that I give. And you never do it again. Mm. Shoo, yeah. I would love to hear what people have to say on that. Sure. Please, guys, hit us up. TCC, The Conversation Capital, on YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook. We're on Facebook, right? On all social media platforms. Thank you so much for the love that you guys already give us all the time. We love you so much. Catch you guys next week. Goodbye and God bless.